It's been almost four months now, and the siege has got people eating their babies. And each other! You're gonna eat your babies! Billy Graham, that hell-bound false prophet, dies. He's gonna split hell wide open, and I can tell you. What? Sorry, I've run a couple of channels. There's clearly been a bit of a, a mistake here. Bit of a mix up. Um, I don't know, what do I do? Carry on. Um, uh, this is unit, this is unit three. I've been practicing that. It's, um, it's getting there, I think. It's getting there. Um, anyway, um, here we are, unit three. Unit three of my psychedelic neuroscience masterclass. Um, we have now completed the introductory neurobiology, so you know all about neurons, uh, you know how they connect to each other, you know how they generate information, and having completed unit two, which I hope you have, you now know uh, what we mean. Um, more, a little bit more formally, when I say information, information, um, you know what I'm talking about when I talk about information. And in this unit, we are going to talk quite a lot about information uh, because um, information is, uh, is fundamental to understanding psychedelic drugs because it's fundamental to understanding how your brain constructs your reality. Now, I love Hermann Hesse. He's one of my uh, favourite authors. He wrote such wonderful books as Demian and uh, Steppenwolf and Siddhartha, fantastic book. Uh, and this is from a semi-autobiographical novel written in 1919, so it's, it's almost exactly a hundred years ago. And when I read this quote, it, it, it really struck me because um, it seemed to perfectly kind of in encapsulate how we understand um, the way that your brain models your reality, you know, as modern neuroscientists, and this was written 100 years ago. Anyway, the quote, if the outside world fell in ruins, one of us would be capable of building it up again for mountain and stream, tree and leaf, root and blossom, all that is shaped by nature lies modeled in us. Now, although that was written a hundred years ago, uh, it's just as relevant now uh, as when it was uh, written. I think the difficulty that many people have in understanding the way that psychedelic drugs work in the brain, or even understanding their own personal reality, their own world that they live in, is, is really, in my opinion, a failure to understand what that world is, um, what that world is built from, how it's constructed. You know, we seem to spend our lives within this world that seems perfectly real. It, it's the world that we just assume or the world that must exist for us. It, it, it's a stable familiar world. It's the world that we enter every time we open our eyes. Every morning we enter this world and hopefully it stays reasonably uh, the same, right? You, you wake up, you seem to emerge within uh, into the same world uh, every day. Um, and because of that, it's, it's difficult to, or it's easy, should I say, um, to kind of lose sight or simply fail to understand what that world actually is. You know, what is the world that you experience? What is your subjective world? What we call your phenomenal world, the world that appears to uh, your consciousness, the world that you are aware of, the world that you seem to be observing from behind your eyes. And in this unit, we're going to look in detail using the 
um, fundamental neurobiology that we learned in unit one, uh, as well as um, the, the definition of information that we also developed in, in unit two, uh, to build up a, um, a firm and kind of deep and clear, hopefully, understanding of, of what your world is. Uh, Hermann Hesse said that all that is shaped by nature lies modelled in us. Um, now, as a neuroscientist, I would say all that is shaped by nature lies modelled in your brain. And in fact, the world that you experience, your subjective phenomenal world, is that model. It is a model of the environment that your brain has evolved, learned, um, to construct. And it constructs this model out of information. So in this unit, we will think about how the brain generates not just information, which we now understand in terms of action potentials uh, and the the, spread, the movement of action potentials between neurons across the chemical synapse, um, but also, or more specifically, how that information can be shaped uh, and sculpted to generate a model of the environment, which is the world that you experience. Looking ahead to unit four, we will then having developed a kind of deep understanding of, 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 of your subjective world, of your subjective model of reality, we will then explore how that model um, was developed. You know, what is the relationship between this model that your brain is always constructing and is really the only subjective world you will ever know, whether you are uh, awake, in normal kind of waking life, whether you are having um, having a dream at night, or whether you are in some bizarre hyperdimensional alien reality at the peak of a DMT trip, your subjective world is always a model, and that model might change dramatically depending on these circumstances. But it's always the model. But clearly, the normal waking world has some kind of relationship to the environment and in unit four we will we will explore that relationship and, un, uh, um, uh, and develop an understanding of, of how that relationship formed and how that how the information that comes from the external world into the brain actually helps to sculpt the um, the information generated by the brain and thus the model of reality and then looking forward even further to um, units kind of six, seven, eight, where we really get into psychedelic drugs, uh, we will explore how psychedelic drugs actually change that model of reality, because that's basically what psychedelic drugs are doing. They're changing the information generated by the brain uh, and changing your model um, of reality. So let's get started. Okay, so in unit one, we I kind of briefly introduced you to the cerebral cortex as being this outer layer of the brain, um, this heavily folded outer layer of the brain that was built from uh, very, very large numbers of, of neurons. So let's just have a, another quick look at the cerebral cortex. So here we have a slice of the uh, cerebral cortex. Um, so a slice of the brain, this is called an axial slice. So you can actually see in the, uh, uh, let's highlight this, there we go. So you can actually see here, um, this is where the slice is taken. Um, so it's, a, it's an axial slice, to the, as if you someone was to chop the top of your head off with a sword. Um, this is what the inside of your head might look like. And we can see, as I'm drawing here, kind of the outline of the cortex. And this, as we also mentioned in the first unit, uh, is often referred to as grey matter. And we have the British spelling of grey. I dare say the correct spelling. 
right? So this is grey matter. Um, and what's going on here? Uh, what colour should we go? Uh, I should go white because it's called white matter, but I won't be able to see it very well. Uh, we'll go yellow. Um, so you actually, here, you actually have connections that come from um, the grey matter. These are actually axons. Uh, and the reason they're white is because they are covered in a, um, the axons are surrounded in this very fatty sheath called the myelin sheath. And this helps to insulate the neurons and makes the, the transmission of the action potential much, much uh, faster. Now we've already discussed how the, the cortex is, is, is constructed from, from neurons, right? Now there are other types of cells in the cortex and in fact, in, in truth, uh, actual neurons, this particular type of information generating cell only accounts for about 10% of the cells, um, but, but they're by far the most important cells in terms of information generation. Um, now, we need to look at um, the, the structure of the cortex, not just in terms of large numbers of neurons, but we need to think about how those neurons are actually uh, organized. Now, in the, the first unit, we, uh, we kind of discussed how the cortex, this, this thin layer, this thin outside layer of the brain, is constructed from a very large network of, of, of very, very large numbers of, of neurons that are kind of connected to each other in an, in an, in an extremely complicated and complex manner. Um, but we need to think about uh, the structure of the cortex um, in terms of the arrangements of these uh, these these neurons. So the cortex is actually constructed from a kind of three-dimensional mosaic of um, what are called cortical columns. And cortical columns are basically cylindrical shaped networks of neurons. Now this will make sense if we actually um, look at a picture. So let's have a look at some cortical columns. So this is a representation of uh, a number of uh, cortical columns, or five cortical columns specifically. Now let me kind of draw on this to illustrate exactly uh, what I'm talking about. So, so this is a single cortical column kind of looks cylindrical. And indeed, if you were to draw kind of a three-dimensional shape, it would look kind of like this. And likewise, here, a bit messy, but you get the point. And might as well finish off. There we go. So these are cortical columns and they have this quite obvious uh, columnar structure which gives them their name. Now if you look you can see you should be able to see quite clearly that each of these cortical columns is constructed from very very large numbers of neurons. Now we won't go into the the details of the you know the types of neurons and how they're connected yet Later in the course, in a later unit, we will need to discuss to some extent, at least, um, the, the certain types of neurons or one particular type of neuron that, that's found in the cortical columns and how it's connected uh, to other neurons and, and how these cortical columns are also connected. But at this stage, we will, um, we will we'll speak at kind of we'll kind of ignore the connectivity of the, um, the actual neurons within the columns. But you should be aware that there are obviously a large number of, of, uh, sorry, of neurons within each cortical column. You will also notice that the, the column seems to be forming kind of bands. There seems to be layers of the cortex. And indeed, 
um, each cortical column um, has six identified layers, and we can actually number them. They start from the top, uh, so the so this is closest to the um, this is kind of the surface, if you like, of the cortex, and this is the deepest down here. So here we have surface, and this is uh, deep down. Um, so this is layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five, layer six. So there are six um, identified layers. These might not quite be correct how I've drawn these or how the artist has drawn these. Uh, but the point is, is there are there are um, there are a number of layers to these quarter, uh, sorry to these these columns, and these columns form this kind of uh, mosaic structure. So if you were to, for example, let me go to the blackboard and show you, if you were to view these columns from a bird's eye view, you would see, so let's say you've got a section of cortex, so you've sliced a square piece of cortex and you were able to actually visualize the columns, then you would see this kind of pattern. Like this. So this is what we saw here. We could see uh, five columns lined up like this, but of course it's they're also lined up, kind of packed together like this. There we go. So you can see that from above the cortex appears to be this mosaic of cortical columns. Um, and I guess it's a little bit tricky to draw, but you can imagine if we drew this on the sideways, just showing a few of these columns. You can see if you take a, a cube of cortex, then you can see how these cortical columns are arranged. So hopefully that is uh, perfectly clear. Nice. And so this is the, and again, just to emphasize the, each of the columns has a number of layers. Uh, and therefore the entire cortex also has a number of layers, six layers to be precise. And just to remind you, the layers are numbered by convention from one to six, what well, normally actually they're good old Roman numerals. You will often see them labeled uh, like this. Okay, so the the cortex is this, this three-dimensional mosaic of, of cortical columns, each of which uh, has a number of layers, has six layers, starting from the um, the top layer being labeled number one and the, the, the deepest layer being layer number six. So as we look at the cortex, we see uh, from a bird's eye view, we can see, as in uh, this diagram, you can see um, this, this mosaic-like structure of circles. So this way of representing cortical columns is something that I'm going to be using throughout this unit and in fact throughout the course. So um, so whenever you see this kind of diagram with these circles uh, with a thick um, outer edge, be aware that we're referring here uh, to, to cortical columns because cortical columns, as we will see, are, the, are fundamental to understanding information generation uh, in the brain. Um, Okay, so in the next video, we will look at how these cortical columns generate information.